I'm out here with my chickens and I wanted to show you some of the meat bird experiments that we have been doing here um, and what we've come um, I know it's been a while since my last post and we've done quite a few things since then um, on our property in order to continue our meat bird experiment um, so I'm going to show you the breeds that we crossed So let's let's get one. Let's see where's where's a good one. Okay, so that's one of our white rocks. <laughs> She's we we did the white rock mixed with the dark Cornish. So there here's our breeders right here. Okay, that's a good good breed good thumbnail right there. All right, and then, so what we did was we bred those, uh, the corn dark Cornish and the white rock, and we did some speckled Sussex too, just to throw something in there. And there's a few that we did the first round that were kind of just the first round of experiments to see what we get. This guy here is a white rock crossed with a dark Cornish. This guy's a white rock crossed with a dark Cornish. Both of them are gorgeous. And then, so the second round, we took the white rock and the cor dark Cornish and the speckled Sussex, and we got these old guys, which I'm calling the Velociraptors. Um, there's a couple more in the corner there. So they all really kind of have that dark Cornish look to them. Um, they're all, there's some more out in our old um, pig pen and they just kind of live their best lives over by the compost pile they dig through that they dig through Karen's old pen and um, we're growing them out a lot of them are actually male so I'm really excited about that they're probably uh, they're the same age as the first round of our Cornish cross, so they're probably a 10 weeks old right now with very little input. Like they feed themselves. Sometimes they sneak into the pen with the rest of them, and sometimes I have to figure out how they get out. But anyway, those are the Velociraptors. They're growing out quite quickly. Um, they have they're, they're making this really gorgeous pattern. I think that one's a, that one's ahead. But most of them are roosters. We're probably not going to keep them as layers. We'll probably butcher all of them because um, for right now, I really don't need any more. <laughs> I really don't need any more uh, laying hens. I've got plenty. Plus, we really, really love the duck eggs. We've got Muscovies, and we've got ducks that we've hatched out ourselves. We really, really love the ducks. The duck eggs are absolutely prime. Um, but like I said, these are the first ones we hatched out. This guy. Uh... So those guys will be going to freezer cramp along with our Cornish cross. And then we'll do a comparison of the first round of the meat bird experiment where we've crossbred two different breeds of, um, <coughs> where we've crossbred two different breeds of uh, heritage chickens in order to get to a uh, the most delicious meat bird that you can possibly have. It's also sustainable, uh, free rangeable, and um, very low low cost input. Um, so far, like I said, these guys are were hen raised, um, and they are extremely self sufficient. They don't really need humans to care for them. Um, so we'll probably keep some of them for breeding for future breeding to see what we can get out of them as well so
So that's kind of the meat birds as we have them summer of 2021. We'll be butchering um, the velociraptors in the fall. Uh, we'll let them grow out all summer long, probably October. We'll be butchering the second round of them. The first round we'll butcher when we get to the Cornish cross. Um, these guys though, I that the genetics of the Cornish are really starting to um, show themselves as not sustainable. This batch, I don't know, I think we lost probably half of them from one hatchery to, um, it, they, they got like a cold and they just died. Even though they were vaccinated for um, coccidiosis, they just do wanted to die, you know? They, I feel like they're reaching the end of the genetic line. They're not gonna be sustainable. Of course, there are other animals that you could use, you know, the big red broilers, that kind of thing too. Uh, they have their issues as well. One of the issues um, with the red birds is that they come to sexual maturity quite quickly and they end up fighting and crowing. <laughs> and um, it's, it's a lot more of a challenge to raise them in this kind of environment. These guys are super chill. Um, they just want to eat and and live their best life. So um, these guys, these guys are actually probably about 14 weeks old right now. They're still on the small side. Um, but these guys, here's our new little friends. They're two and a half weeks old. We only lost two of them. And they're doing great and they're sweet pea. <laughs> they're doing absolutely perfect. But it feels like maybe we're reaching some genetic end of the line because I really don't do anything different with them. They're raised the same exact way. First, you know, three, four weeks, they're raised indoors with. Um, feeders and grit and, um, you know, little hover brooders. They have the same feed. They have the same environment. They have everything is the same. So I don't know why one batch is awesome. It grows super fast and like Cornish cross should. And another, they just want to die and they're tiny. I, I don't get that. The only thing I can think of is, you know, there could be something with the weather because these guys were started in May, April, at the end of April or early, yeah, end of April is when we got them. And it's August. They should have been butchered a long time ago, but we haven't been able to. Um, just a quick other update. Look at my garden. <laughs> Look how good that looks. It's so awesome. I love it. All of the we used the woven weed fabric in there. We did not use the woven weed fabric in the other garden. We've had lots of challenges this summer and we lost probably all of our carrots. Um, yeah, the tomatoes are, tomatoes are looking pretty good, but other than that. So this is almost year two of us living at this homestead. Um, the biggest challenge that we've had so far is we had an injury on the farm. My husband was sharpening one of his knives uh, on the grinder wheel and it shot off and stabbed him in the gut. So we're kind of downsizing right now. We just took our lambs that we'd raised on the farm for the last three, four months to butcher last week. So we'll get the meat back probably in a few days and um, then we just have the two goats we sold our pigs um, and that was more of a personal decision uh, pigs are wonderful creatures and they're really kind of smarter than dogs and it, it it 
we we butchered them and we sold you know sold part of the meat and we're eating part of the meat from the pigs but we're, we're choosing not to go down that road because um having pigs uh and understanding how they how intelligent they are oh crap i'm gonna have to go rescue a chicken hopefully he can figure out where the to get out Anyway, they're too intelligent to eat. <laughs> That's what we've decided after raising pigs and having them here. Um, we're gonna finish eating the food that we have because we raised them for meat. And then we're out of the pig game. Not saying that we never will eat pork again, but we're choosing to limit our consumption because of the fact that pigs are sentient, I'm sorry. You ever had one? You get to know a pig? There's something in there. It's not just animal brain. They work things out. They they think. Um, our pig Karen. Scary intelligent. Dolphin. Chimp intelligence. Not something that you want to eat. Anyway, I have to go rescue a chicken. She decided to take a bath. Come on, bro. How'd you go? There is a rock in there so they can get out. Come on, sweetheart. No! Oh, a splashy McSplasher. You good? Okay.